All right, welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your moderator today, as we're delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you as a professional leader in business, whether you are an aspiring woman leader, or a woman leading people, or projects, or teams, or even a company or business. Our goal is to select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now here's a couple of little highlights here. As our webinar is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we'll be answering any questions that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. We have an awesome webinar today. I'm delighted to say that our topic is how to speak your client's language so you can grow your business. And our thought leader today is Cynthia Trevino, and she is known as the Client Clarity Mentor. Um, her business is She Markets Mentor, and what you need to know about Cynthia is that if you love your clients, I'm assuming all of us do, and we want more of them, yes we do, Cynthia, then you are all gonna be glad you showed up today. Cynthia has spent 30 plus years working with businesses, both big and small. Clients say that she teaches them how to think like their clients, how to think and gain confidence about marketing, and how to get to client pain points and content and conversations. I know, we know Cynthia as the client clarity mentor. She teaches us to connect with more of our perfect clients. She's a master at helping women grow blogs, brands, and businesses. Boy, that's a tongue twister. She is the author of the Amazon number one bestseller, She Market, a guide for women entrepreneurs. And Cynthia will share with us today how to know our clients better than anyone so we can attract more of them and have more income and impact. Boy, welcome, Cynthia Trevino. You are on my dear thank you so much Michelle that was wonderful thank you with enthusiasm uh, <laughs> <laughs> totally totally <laughs> I'm so glad to be here and be inspired and connected with women of influence thank you all for being here on a Monday and I'm excited to share some ideas and insights with you and I'm thrilled to answer your questions at the end and so you know, speaking your client's language is so important, and I believe it's important for so many reasons, because that's what I do, but if you think about your business, you started your business because you felt like you could do it better than it was being done in your industry, whatever problem you solve. Or if you're inside a company, you're there because you share their values and their mission, and it coincides with what you want to accomplish. And so, being in business for women is important because that's how you take care of your family, have your own dreams come true, save for retirement, start a charity, travel the world, whatever your dreams are. But it's also because you're doing what you love. And that's what's so phenomenal about the time we live in. So you're doing what you love and you know what you're doing. You do it better than any, anyone else and you do it better than anyone else because you know the kinds of clients you serve. So that's how we're going to position what we're doing today because it's so important. And anyone who knows me knows that they hear me say, the world needs all of the women entrepreneurs, executives, and leaders that can get its hands on right now because <laughs> there's so many problems to solve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and women are nimble and we're efficient and we're smart and we're insightful and so I think every everybody would agree with me on those points <laughs> so yes. let's let's dive in and I and I had the pleasure of working with Anna a few years ago and she started a business with this luscious body butter that she created and other products with argon oil it was just delightful and she started a socially conscious business and from day one of her startup even before she was cash flow positive she gave back a part of the proceeds to the village in morocco where the women sourced the argon oil and they were really the economic engine in that village 
And the product was flying off the shelves in retail outlets and spas, which was fabulous. But her business plan also included selling online. And this is when e-commerce was relatively new. And her website sales were not coming through. So she brought me on and I sat down with her and her salesperson and I asked them the question I love to ask all of my private clients. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said to them, who is your perfect client? And both of them said together in unison, women from the ages of 18 to 81. <laughs> yes. So that's a pretty, that's a, a few generations, right? So what, what we talked about was that's who buys your product, but that's not who your perfect client is. So we honed it down to women between 45 and 55 who resonated with Anna's social mission of giving back women, helping women, and were uh, comfortable buying online and were busy professionals. So we got that honed down. And then her blogs began to resonate and her website sales went up and to the right, which is where we want all of our sales to go, right? And it, it was really exciting. So uh, helping her with her perfect client was, was really a joy. And that may be something that you can think about as we go through this. So now there are some pitfalls to not really honing in on your ideal client, but there's really only three. There's probably a lot more, but let, there's only three that are important. And the first one is you're going to lose opportunity to help the people that you help best. Those clients, customers, and buyers who are going to get the best results from your products and services. You're going to lose the opportunity to find them and help them. You're going to lose sales from people who don't realize that you're talking to them. If you don't know how to speak your client's language, you will sound like you're talking to everybody. <laughs> and unless you're Nike or Coca-Cola, you don't want to spend your time talking to everybody. And you're going to lose time, our most precious resource. So that is the reason why you really want to focus in on speaking your client's language. Now, your reward for learning who your client is, getting to know them better than anyone else in your space is that you will be able to make the best decisions about your content, your conversations, your business development and marketing. Imagine how you'll feel when you know exactly what to talk about, what to do videos, what to do social posts or articles that you publish either on your website or in an industry publication uh, or an, an association publication where your perfect clients hang out. And you're going to know exactly what they are like, what they're struggling with, and you're going to go very deep. And we're going to talk about that. But just envision how that will feel. In addition, uh, everything you do, and I'll bring up the V word, video. <laughs> you know, the Facebook executives have said in their public calls that they believe that very shortly, within a couple of years, that 80% of everything in the news feed in Facebook that's consumed is going to be video. And of course, they're really big on Facebook Live. So your videos, your articles, however you're comfortable creating content, you're going to come from a place of strength and knowledge once you know who your ideal client is. So let's dive into five steps to speak your perfect client's language. And before we do that, <laughs> I will tell you what might be going through your mind. And so very often, uh, uh, well, always, I hear this from my private clients, but Cynthia, I'm going to miss out on business. Mm -hmm. and, and people will just shake their head and go, nope, I can serve everybody. Everybody needs my services. And while that may be true, you really don't want to expend too much energy on attracting those tire kickers. And and there's also a three-word answer I use when somebody says, but I don't want to miss out on business. And here's the three words. You're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <I like laughs> so <that. laughs> you can definitely 
obviously, whether you're an executive, an entrepreneur, or wherever you're working in an organization, you make the decision on who to work with. It's your choice. But the reason I like to have women learn who their perfect clients are is because then all of the valuable energy you expend and expense in time and money and resource on creating marketing, creating programs, all of that is going to be focused on the person you want to serve best. Then as you draw people to you, you can make the choice on who to work with and not. So with that um, fear set aside for the moment, let's dive in. First of all, we want to know our ideal client better than anyone else in our space does. And this means going way, way beyond demographics. Demographics are, as we know, provable facts like age, income, marital status. Okay, everybody does that. And many entrepreneurs will say, oh, I know my perfect client. That's men between the ages of 40 and 60 getting ready to retire. Well, once again, <laughs> that's a pretty big swath of men. <laughs> and, and even though they're approaching retirement age, how do you know they want to retire? So who within that large group of people is your, your perfect ideal client? The kinds of people who really are going to get the best results from your products and services. Okay, Cynthia, well, what is an ideal client? Let's talk about what traditional marketing tells you. Target market. We've all heard target market. And let's say you're a wellness coach in Chicago and you work with women one-on-one -on -one, and you like to work with um, professional women between the ages of 45 who are overworked and overwhelmed. Okay, that's a pretty big target market in any city, I think we would agree, right, yeah. Michelle? I think it's every woman too, but okay. Every, in every city. Overworked and, um, and overwhelmed. Overworked and overwhelmed. That's, that's a giant. So you think about the big giant beach ball of your target market. And then traditional uh, marketing and business also tells you, okay, we'll niche it down. So let's say our wellness coach says, all right, 45 to 55 professional women overwhelmed, overworked, and overweight. All right, we're getting there. That's mm -hmm. good. So that's a much smaller niche of people, right? But the difference is then I believe your ideal client is the diamond in the center. And she is the woman who meets all the other criteria with the difference being she is motivated to make a change. She's ready to work with an expert. She's tried everything, every cleanse, every diet, every workout with my friends, nothing has helped. So she's the motivated person who's going to get the best results with your products and services. Why? Because she's ready to collaborate. She's ready to work with an expert. So let's talk about that. And step two is looking at your client's emotions. As you can see on the bell curve here, there's, there's the whole range of people who are in pain all the way over to the right where they're motivated. And so I think we would all agree that there's a lot of people who have pain they have, they're experiencing problems in your area of expertise, but many of them aren't quite ready to dive in and make a change. Many of them are clue, clueless, they're confused, and let's face it, we know people who like to whine for a while until they're really ready to make a change, right? So over on the left side of our curve, we've got a lot of people who are clueless and confused, and they're going to waste time, and they're not your ideal clients. Why? Because they're not eager. They're not ready to roll up their sleeves. They're not ready to make a change. Because for most of us, when on the people we serve, you really can't do it yourself, can you? For most of the things we do, the client, the buyer, the customer needs to dive in and they have to hold up their end of the bargain to make meaningful change, right? So, um, so that's why you want to really understand in your world, in your industry, for your clients, what does it mean? What are the signals that show that they're motivated and they're ready to dig in and make a change? And our next, our third step is using your client's words. Now, we're all experts at what we do, and it's 
so easy. <laughs> it's so easy to fall into the lingo, the jargon of our industry. We get so used to maybe using acronyms. So maybe your client doesn't really understand what limiting beliefs are. Maybe they don't really get what is an APR or any of the terminology that's common in your industry and that your peers in your industry understand, but that your clients don't. So you want to mine, you want to dig into your biggest client success stories. And the best way to do this, I believe, is to sit down and replay your biggest client successes in the past. What did people say to you? about their problems and what did they say about how they felt after they worked with you, after they used your products or services? How did they describe what it was like to go from where they were stuck to where they wanted to be, to the happy ending, to the outcome that they really wanted? Now, I think this is a great exercise for journaling. Um, now, personally, when I sit down to do this, I sit down with a glass of Pinot Noir, but you sit down <laughs> with a be better. I know. You sit down with a beer, a Coke, a coffee, whatever your beverage of choice is, and give yourself time to really think through and get down how your clients express themselves. And then use those words in your content, your conversations and videos, whatever you're creating, so that more of your ideal clients who don't know you yet will go, wow, she really gets me. And so the other thing is, excuse me, I've mastered this now. <laughs> Step four is content. Now, I know you've all heard this and you're going to say, I have heard content is king until I pull, can pull my hair out. But in 2018 and for the foreseeable future, content is how people discover us. However we, we're most comfortable, however you feel best expressing, sharing your knowledge, your insights, your ideas, so that people who don't know you yet can learn about you. And uh, so a thumb stopping topics. What I mean by that is look around you. If you're in the bank, if you're in line to pick up your kids, if you're waiting for the movie to start, <laughs> what is everybody doing? They've got their cell phones out, right? And they're thumbing through. They're looking for a problem to solve. Whatever problem is on their mind, they're looking for content. Do they need a new summer camp for their kids? Do they need new software? Are they tired of doing their own taxes? Is it time they got professional help for whatever kind of problem you solve? So, so remember, there people, we're all human beings, we're all creatures of, oh, okay, I've got two minutes in between client projects, or I've got four minutes, what can I find that's going to make me smarter, right? That's what they're doing. So think about that. And the benefit of you investing the time to understand your ideal clients as complete people, knowing not just the problems in your industry that you solve, whether they're software related or finance related or uh, helping them become keynote speakers, whatever you do, in addition to that, they've got hopes and dreams behind what they want to do. Now, the next benefit of knowing your client and really drilling down on what are the topics they most want to learn about is you'll avoid the trap of talking too much about your services, your products, and your business. Now, before someone really knows you and they know that you get them, you really understand where they're coming from, that you've walked in your shoes yourself, or you've helped other people just like them. So they want to know more about the kinds of outcomes you're helping people achieve, people just like them. And so once you're working with them, once they're your customer, your client, your buyer, then you can be an expert. Then you can talk about your services. But in the beginning, when they're getting to know you, you want to focus in on the outcomes in painting, this picture of how lovely their life will be 
after they've solved their problem, working with you or they've achieved a dream that they've been going for for years. So our last step is to be intentional. Now, planning is like one of those words, it's sort of jargon, content plans, and that's the jargon in my industry, which is business and marketing. But, you know, when you wake up on the average random Wednesday, and you've got on your calendar, today's the day you're going to create an article or record a video, or you're going to go live on one of the social media platforms. What you really want to do is you don't want to have to struggle with what do you talk about. Because what happens if you don't have something planned out, you're going to talk about what you know best, which is your area of expertise, which is good, but you really want, you want to tell stories, you want to share anecdotes that will resonate with your ideal clients. You want to answer the questions that are burning on their mind. And by, by doing the work ahead of time, by building the strong foundation of knowing your person, your ideal perfect buyer, better than anybody else in your space knows them. On that random Wednesday, you're going to create a sensational piece of content because you've already thought about and you've planned out the topics you're going to talk about the first week, the second week, the third week. So when I work with my private clients, they all tell me that their favorite part of our work is brainstorming. And we do brainstorming sessions so that we can come up with topics and headlines and email subject lines and blog titles and all of the sorts of things that, that you need to get yourself inspired. Because once you thought this through, you know your person, you know not only the questions that they have about your industry, but you know what their aspirations are, what their their why is, why they're doing the work, or why they have a business, or why they want to speak on keynote stages, or why they want to get out of their office before 8 p.m. so they can uh, attend their kids' soccer games. You know all of that about them. You've gone deeper. And then you have put all of that to work and you know what you're going to talk about. And so that's why you need to plan your content. You need to map out in advance the things you know that your ideal clients are searching for. So you started your business or you do the work you do, you join the organization you joined because you resonated with the mission because it was consistent with the work you want to accomplish in the world. And you do what you do so you can take care of yourself and your family. And, but you also do this because you want to make an impact. You love what you do because you know you make a difference for people in their lives, in their businesses, in their health or their finances, whatever kind of work you do. And please don't forget that your ideal clients need you. They're looking for you. There's a group of ideal clients out there that can best solve their problems or achieve their dreams by working with you. And those are the people you want to reach. Mm. So, oh, this has been fun. I hope this has stirred up some questions, some ideas, some Cynthia, tell us more, or Cynthia, I don't believe that because, <laughs> right? We want to hear all of that. And if you'd like to, I'd love to have you join my email community. I talk about this topic, speaking your client's language, understanding them better than anyone else on my blog. And you can uh, join my email community at shemarketsmentor.com slash join. Um, or you can find my book on Amazon. Wow. So, <laughs> so, Michelle. Yeah, th this was really good. You know, it's funny, Cynthia. It's like I think all of us in business, we always want to work smarter, not harder. And yet, 
you know, you and I could both like list how many, I mean, at least even in my experience, sometimes I go, why am I working so hard when I can be more efficient? And I think that's, that's what I love. And we do have some questions, you know, among some of the comments, Cynthia is asking here for all of our attendees, if, you know, what was your biggest takeaway? So if you want to, you know, kind of put a little comment in our um, kind of message box as well, but these are some of the questions I've got, Cynthia. Here's one from someone. Um, comment, this is Patricia. She really liked the visual with the target market, the niche market, and the ideal client. I think her question is, what toolkit um, what toolkit would you suggest in implementing this? Like, do you have a toolkit or advice? Uh, right. Um, I do in my book. I have, I have a five-step system that I take my clients through, and it's in my book, She Markets. Um, I, I do share step-by-step, step, starting with making sure that you focus first on one of your ideal clients. You'll probably have multiple but start with one and go through and ask yourself all the questions about them that you can because the, the, the tool is to go deeper in understanding everything about them as a complete person, their hopes, their dreams, what is their average day like, and, and what do they already know about your specific area of expertise? Have they tried, what have they already tried why are they coming to you? Have they tried to do things by hand and they throw up their hands? They, have they tried to do things by themselves and they throw up their hands in despair? And they say, you know, I just need to learn um, this from an expert. So my recommendation is to go very deep. Did, did I answer that question, Michelle? I'm, I think so. It's like yeah. if people come back in, we, you know, again, this is a little bit flat in conversation. That was a question. Yeah. You know, I mean, along that, I think, that's a question I've got for you is how do you find out, like how do you find the hopes and dreams and things about your clients? Do you go back and ask them? Is that what you're recommending people do based on working with you or what would be kind of a, I know, I know there's great information in your book and I want to recommend every participant get them, but what would be a way to kind of go find out more? And the only way I see it is to go ask your clients with some really yes. tough questions. Yes, you, you can ask them. That's true. But even before that, so that you ask really smart questions, one of the things you can do is to just make sure you get everything out of your head that you already know. You want to get it actionable. You want it you want to paint a picture, you want to write a story about who your person is, and then you can go back and fill in the holes and ask them really smarter questions and deeper questions because you've gotten out everything you know. I, I loved, I heard an expert say, never ask a question of a prospective client or customer or buyer that you can't find on LinkedIn or their website right? So you, wow. you want to always do your homework first so that you know so much, you know everything you can glean from digging through their profiles, their website, their whatever they're sharing on social media. And then the questions you ask them are going to be so much richer and deeper and, you're, and that will allow you to set yourself apart from others in your space because you've gone that much deeper. So I guess this leads to a question for me, but there's another one online that I'm, I'll go to, but I'm going to pop in mine first because I think this is great, right? To know all this stuff about your ideal client and know it better than yourself. Like I'm finding even with our association, I don't know that I, I'm this dialed in. And so this leads to a question online from, oh, this is from Carrie. I'm fairly new in business as an owner. Does my ideal client evolve over time or should I know this now? Oh, perfect question. Your ideal, it, it's all true. Both things are true. Your ideal client will totally evolve over time. As you refine the kinds of services and programs you want to create, you'll, and you'll refine those as a result of knowing your ideal client. But it's, it's always wonderful to start with a basis, start with your assumptions, and then you test them. You test your messaging, you test your content, you test your email subject lines or titles of blogs or articles, whatever you're creating, and, and then you go back and refine it. And I love your question because what I recommend is every single time you finish a project or an engagement or working with 
a client that you feel like, oh my God, I want 20 more just like them, right? We all have those people, don't we? Right. <laughs> hey, yes, we do. So, so as soon as you finish that, Carrie, go in to your um, ideal client and go through, refine it, add things, delete things, change things, because you're going to get smarter and smarter as you go on. But being new in business, it's so, you're going to be so much farther ahead than just going with my ideal client is, you know, women between 45 and 55 in Chicago who are over, yeah. overwhelmed, right? Because <laughs> because that's that's a pretty big group. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll love this comment. This this is from Pat, and she goes, um, "Okay, I'm not new in business. I've been in business 25 years, and I still don't know my ideal client better than anyone else." So comment on that if you've been in business a long time. But oh. What, yeah. <laughs> She's like saying, oh well this is great for starting up but it's a long time and I have to I have to agree with her on that I'm like I don't think we've ever documented like we we put down messaging I try to hear what members say but she's right you know how does she go start out when I obviously get the book but what would you recommend with her just go back to your past clients and yes out? yeah yes. And it's, it's like getting it down on paper is so much value. Now, I had to learn this all the hard way. I was a, a marketing consultant after getting dumped from corporate America. Maybe some of you can relate. There was a massive downsizing. And all of a sudden, you know, at the age of like over 50, I was instantly an overnight entrepreneur. But anyway. <laughs> and, welcome and to I, entrepreneurship, right? Welcome to entrepreneurship. Exactly. And so, um, and I just decided that, okay, I'm going to do marketing for small business owners. Piece of cake. I did marketing in corporate forever. I got this. No worries. I'm a marketing professional, right? Ha. Was I wrong? Because what I did is I made the mistake of assuming that small business owners were just miniature, you know, big uh, corporate America people and that their uh, problems were, just had fewer uh, decimal points, fewer zeros behind them. But that was totally not true because I used the lingo I talked about things that made small business uh, owners' eyes glaze over. I talked about content plan, editorial calendars, and product launch campaigns. I made all those mistakes until I finally woke up and said, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? And mm -hmm. I sat down, and even with years of doing marketing, I had to start from scratch. And by then, I'd been doing business for a super long time. But then I got clear, and I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, follow the rule book. Somebody had talked about ideal client. Let me just go figure this out and do this. Now, when you're working in corporate, um, or even if you've been doing your business for a while, you get referrals, you have, you know, a lot of ways. And when you meet people in person, there's always a way to make a connection, right? But particularly with your online content, your online presence, um, even though you've been in business for a while, it's just, just stepping back making, telling your story, however you want to do the story about what you know, and focus on those clients that got the best results. Ah, they, so not every client you're not, saying, not every client, best. not every client, focus on the ones that got the best results and really replay in your mind so that you get down. How did they express themselves? And and then you'll start going backwards and you'll remember how they talked about their problems in the beginning. And if once you start getting it out of your head, it's going to be so much more valuable. And then you'll say, oh, now I understand there's, you know, you understand these 15 or 20 attributes, worldviews, values, behaviors that are shared by your most successful clients. Did that help, Michelle? Yeah, I think it was good. I mean, I'm watching more questions coming. I'm kind of chuckling. So um, in tandem with this, what this is, oh, this is Sherry. What are some questions I should ask my clients to find out more about them? What makes them roll? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Right, right. Assuming you've already done your homework and you know a lot of things. See, I can give you general questions, but remember, each of you, even if you're in a similar industry, your ideal perfect client is going to be different, um, slightly different. So you um, can ask 
questions about what did they already try? Make sure you know what they've already tried before they get to you, right? Before they uh, jump into your solution or they say, <laughs> you know, ask them what they've tried. Ask them what other things they're doing around the kind of solution that you're, that you're offering. Because you want to know not just the problems they're having in your space, but the related spaces around because that way you'll understand what else they're struggling with. So the, the kinds of, does, it, it, does that help? Yeah, no, I think it does. But it, you know, I mean, going a little deeper on that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sh can I share a story? Do you mind? Sure, please, please. I, please. I see I'm still struggling with this even in CWI, but back when I started in business, I, I do remember I used to write business plans for people looking for, either funding or focus, right? That's how I started back in the early 90s. And I remember literally, it was so visual when I would tell people, oh, you know, the standard question, what do you do? And I would say, well, you know, I help small businesses write business plans. I mean, I could literally watch them take a step back like, oh, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? It was that <laughs> noticeable. And I went, geez, do I smell or, you know, what that? <laughs> but I, I don't, I think it was the Guerrilla Marketing book by J. Conrad Levinson back in the day. If you remember that book, Cynthia. I'm yes, I do. And no, I do. It totally. really changed things for me. And this is kind of like where you're going. But when I, I really learned, I don't know if this was speaking my clients, but I learned to think in terms of outcomes, right? And instead of now, what I learned from that book was when people said, what do you do? I would always say, you know what? I go, this is what my clients have told me. I could tell you what I do, but what they tell me is that they feel more focused. They feel like they are in control of their business. You know what I mean? And it was like, woo, all of a sudden the lights went on. People like stepped into me as opposed to away from me. And I know that's what you're getting at. And I feel a little inept because I go, my gosh, we've been in business 10 years. And I think I could answer that, but I'm going to go message this stuff down and revisit your book. Um, for our association and make sure because I felt very clear about that in that business, you know, when I first started out out of frustration, but I don't know that I've done that for CWI. So anyway, that's pretty cool. You know, what, what, how to find out, you know, what problems we solve. And I like outcomes. I love that word. Like what's the end result for people? How are they going to feel? What's it going to look like? Right. How they're better off. Right. Exactly. Because it, that's so true. Um, I love your story about talking about business plans because, you know, sometimes people will start with when they introduce themselves, they start with, well, I do this and this and this. And those are things that everybody hears. But uh, the way you said you help people that feel more focused, they feel more tuned in and they, because they know where their business is going because they've had, they created a plan and that's what everybody's looking for. And each of your people, each of your perfect clients, customers or buyers are going to have slightly different twists on what they want. What is their happy ending? What is, what is, how do they describe the destination? They're stuck somewhere and, how do they describe where they want it to get to? And those are the things that your successful clients that adore you and worship you and say, oh my God, it was so wonderful working with you because, and when you capture that, then that's going to help you really hone in on, because hone in on the things that are going to make them take notice, that are going to make them stop in their newsfeed or open your email or lean in in a conversation like you said Michelle rather than sort of backing away when their eyes glaze over it happened to me because I would say oh I help small business owners with marketing and product launches and 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 you know editorial calendars and <laughs> lots of glazed eyes so yeah, it, yeah. and, it, and it, it, this, it, is, this isn't easy I mean I got to say I think this is a this is a work in progress for any of us but here's um, another question is this is from Laura where do I start with creating content I mean, this is like one of the biggest pieces for most yeah. of us as small business owners. Like, you know, we know, we know we have to create content, but God, where do you start with step one, step two, in your opinion? You start with what do, you, what do your perfect clients want more than anything? What's on their minds? What are they struggling with? It is tried and true, but once you've mapped out some, once you've written down everything you know about them, you're going to be so much smarter. You're going to see insights that you hadn't thought about. And you're going to create content 
that stands out, that captures their attention and stands out from everybody else in your field because you've honed in on the person who wants to save for their kid's college or who wants to get out of their office and go to their kid's soccer games. Whatever the hopes and dreams are, you'll hone in on those and you'll find that once again, those shared things that your successful clients have said, I'm so happy because now I can, I can, you know, take off weekends. Now I can speak on bigger stages, whatever they've said. And they, that, did they feel powerful? Did they feel fulfilled? Did they feel just um, like they're able to give more and impact more people? So when it comes to creating content, it's going to be very specific because you do want to stand out. You don't want to sound like everyone else because everyone is creating content. You want to hone in, you want to drill down and come up with the kinds of thoughts, ideas, and terms that are going to cause them to say, oh, let me invest, let me go find this person. You know, I get, I, I, I love that. I mean, I think it gets into too. I, I heard somebody say a long time ago and I, and I'm taking notes as well to think we need to go through this exercise and I need to revisit your book. But I remember somebody saying to me one time and I thought, Oh my God, this has got to be the hardest thing to ever do. But they said, and I will use their words and I'm paraphrasing, but they said, think of every dumb, lame ass, stupid question frequently asked question thing that people ask you about in your business development process and try to identify those because those tell you at least as a start the hurdles that they're thinking about and chewing on before they do business with you right I mean when you yes. think about that I mean I don't know there again I don't know if that helps or not but what what would you is there again is this all in your book that there's kind of like the how to list out these these, you know, questions and what to talk about and how to come up with all this? Is that pretty much a game plan in your book? Or do you have a story of how a business owner kind of came through it and how they did it? That might be helpful. Right. One of my clients um, was struggling to stand out and had been doing some content, but was, was doing everything very generically. And because she served a uh, three or four different pretty much equally kinds of clients with everything she wrote, she was trying to appeal to all of them and all of them at the same time. So what we learned, what I, what we learned through the process is she came up with three different ideal clients and then she just rotated her content. And, you know, the first week of the month, she went for client A, second week of the month, client B and client C. Because while all of your ideal clients are going to share some basic uh, emotions, drivers, priorities, and passions, there's going to be a slightly different twist to where they're coming from. Maybe their gender, maybe their place, um, their background. They, everybody's going to have different hurdles to overcome. But so it's a matter of just making sure you know who you're talking to, talking to the one at a time, and focusing on uh, the basics. And, um, and the basics mean, you're right, Michelle, answering the questions that they all ask, you know, the questions they all ask. But I always, I always urge my clients to go beyond answering the basic questions because it's true. Um, everybody needs, there's basic things that people that aren't experts in your um, industry, they're going to ask those questions. But then go to the questions that they don't know to ask. I call them the should ask questions, Ooh. should ask questions. And those are the questions that they don't know to ask when they're trying to invest in products and services like yours until it's too late. You know, it's sort of the, think of the gotchas, right? Mm -hmm. The gotchas. If you know, if they'd known this in advance, they would have made a better buying choice, right? Or they would have chosen more carefully the professional they were going to work with, right? So you can share those. So you, I agree with you, Michelle, the frequently asked questions. And of course, always be generous in your knowledge and go deeper. 
And if others in your space are sharing the same answers, make yours richer, deeper, more interesting. Um, but my client was able, when she found the nuances be, between these three ideal clients, she was able to wrote, uh, to alternate and do content for each of them once a month. And she got more um, uh, people clicking on her emails and she got more contacts mm -hmm. and more clients because she took a breath and, and, and it's, it's just, you don't have to be all things to all people with every piece of content, right? Right, right. <laughs> you want to be very focused. I think that leads to, there's another question, and this is from, um, oh my gosh, who is this? I can't, it's from, it looks like, okay, Lori, sorry. Different way to spell Lori. Um, Lori asked, it's like, what if I have a number of different types of clients, um, is the question. Do you do a different ideal client for each one, or, you know, yes. try to yes. center in on just one? Yes, start with one, and then, um, you know, you might, like, like my client who was uh, working on her own, she had three, and that was all she could handle. Um, so when you, when you pick your ideal client, make sure that you, as long as you, when you pick the ideal client, you're going to start with one, and then just go through, write their story, assemble everything you know about them in one place. Maybe it's a binder, maybe you're you do everything on, on your computer or a journal, you put everything together and start with one and then go through everything for that one. And then think about your next one and think about what's different with the second one. And um, if you're working with a small team or you're um, a solo entrepreneur, you maybe three or four, but, but always not only consider who's your ideal client, but consider the product or program or service that you're, that they're best suited for. So like keep, yeah, keep your end product in mind, you know, the end, because with every piece of content, with every conversation, obviously you want to recruit and enroll the people that you want to work with. And yeah. Yeah. So Here, here's one a question from uh, Kathy, and so she does commercial. She says, "I do commercial interior design. I'm mostly B two B. I don't really. I know that I make things pretty in office environments." She goes, "But I honestly, can identify the problems I help my clients solve. They they all want furniture. So I'm curious what you might say on that." They want furniture. That's a good question, dude. But but, um, and this is where you can gain some insight by checking out their profiles on LinkedIn of the decision makers, the check writers, um, check out their website, their social profiles. What's the mission of the company? Oh, because, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, this is a question that, uh, was it Kathy? Yes. Yes. Uh, Kathy, you can ask yourself, um, what's their mission? Uh, and remember, only review the websites of the clients who, um, uh, you know, who, who you got the best results for in the past. Look for the shared values, mission statements, what are their goals. I would imagine in corporate um, and businesses of any size, retention is huge because so many um, in people that you hire are uh, job hopping or they're not committed. So, uh, you know, they don't stay committed to one specific company for very long. So maybe they want to create an environment that's enticing that, that is, um, reveals their values and, and makes the space welcoming. Uh, maybe they, you know, what, yeah. are, what, what are their common goals? What are the mission that you can find? And then you can, um, ask more detailed questions like, like what is their reason for uh, investing in new furniture at this point in time? Are they expanding? Are they having trouble with turnover and they just want a brighter, more welcoming environment? You right? know, along with that, yeah, along with that, Cynthia, do you recommend kind of uh, flagging or keeping track of, let's say, details about your clients? Like one of the things, <clears throat> you know, I used to do is kind of look at size of company, you know, who the decision maker was I was working with. But, you know, I mean, again, that emotional or EQ part kind of comes out because that's the kind of hidden answers. But maybe she could profile 
um, her best clients a little more. And, and right back to what you said before, go back to the one she worked with and said, what did, what was the end result? Do you love where you work? What is it you liked about what I did? I mean, that's what I would recommend. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And, and, and you're going to be able to design the questions to ask, um, you're, you're going to be able to really drill down once you, um, once again, you get everything out of your head. And it's always easier for me and, and get it out on paper so that you know what you know about them. And then you fill in the holes. Yeah, and, I'm, going to, I'm going to go back to what we were talking about before we even started the webinar. And it's like, this is one of the reasons I love Evernote so much is it allows you to kind of have a fluid on the go you know, jot place where you can put things down because this is going to be like an ever building document, right? I mean, I love that you're saying put it down. It's not finite. It's going to grow as you grow. But we were talking about Evernote before we even jumped yes. on the webinar. Yes. I'm like, log it in there, you know, <laughs> you, right? You're not trying to fumble and find a Word document that you can't find when you're on the fly. Exactly, exactly. Yes, and go through. And that's why um, I think we talked about this before too, Michelle, or we may have mentioned it. After every really great client um, project, go back while it's fresh on your mind and go through what you've documented about your person and make changes, make additions, make deletions. What, what isn't true anymore? Because as, you, it, as we said, once you refine your business, once you refine and say, oh, I want more of my perfect client A, or I want more of my perfect client B, um, you'll fill it in, you'll change it. But it, what I find, and my clients tell me this, once they start getting it down, once they start asking themselves questions, remember, you want to know your ideal client like you know your family. <laughs> yeah, you, and, and you want to talk to them in emails and in your materials you want them to feel like you're their friend because everybody needs friends right, right. <laughs> we all want to work with people we know like and trust and this is how and you clearly all of you are doing something already that that is drawing good people good clients that are ethical and good to work with to you all you want to do is maximize that so you i'm sure you already know more than you think you know and it's just a matter of getting it out and so that you can use it and massage it. And it will definitely change over time. I love it. I love that. And I have time for one more final comment from you. Like, is there anything you want to, like, there's no pressure. I always do this to every, <laughs> every webinar. <laughs> I'm like, what's one thing you want to leave us with, Cynthia, that everybody's going to go, oh, that was awesome. No pressure on your side. But, no pressure. Um, that was awesome. Like that one, was awesome. We're going to have a link to your website. How do you want people to reach you? And then what's the, the one thing you want to leave us with on, on the webinar? And thank you for being our leading lady today. Oh, thanks so much. So if you've heard this story before, forgive me, but think, of, think about when you're thinking about focusing in on your ideal client, think about J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, as we know, built a huge empire with the Harry Potter stories and movies and everything that goes with it. And when J.K. Rowling got the idea, I think everybody knows the story probably that she was on welfare. She was a single mom and she was writing on by hand and in coffee shops and on the train. Yeah. And, but when she got the idea for Harry Potter and the story, she was thinking of one reader. She was thinking of just one person, and that was a 13-year-old boy. And as we know, fast forward several years, J.K. Rowling's empire and her stories have resonated and connected with people in every single country, across every culture, across every age group, every generation. And so don't be worried about chasing people away. Just remember that the reason she resonated across so many barriers and so many brought together so many different people of all age groups and cultures is because she focused on one. She poured all of her passion, everything she knows about creating beautiful stories and, and, and these beautiful tales that kept us all enthralled 
because she was speaking to the one. And when you speak to the one, you bring out the best in you and you attract the right people. Wow. That's like a drop the mic. Bam. That's awesome. I want to say thank you to you for being our thought leader today. Um, we had quite a few listeners on and for all of our attendees, it's like this will be live, uh, not live, it'll be um, archived on YouTube and then on the CWI site. So you'll be able to review it later. Cynthia, you're amazing. Um, I want to tell everybody we're going to be back again soon with our next Women, Women Lead webinar. And you know, our whole goal is how you can lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. So thank you for being with us.